This is Earl Clayton Church of Christ in Lumba, Texas. This is the Sunday morning message, Sunday, September 29, 2024. AM message is do not accept unbelief in your life so that your heart will be hardened. Do not accept unbelief in your life so that your heart will be hardened. Jesus warned the disciples about unbelief, which causes the heart to harden as this sin deceives. A hardened heart is given when we do not believe. See, it's given, brethren. Look at John 12, 37. It's given. See, you know, uh, as I hear people talk, men and women, it amazes me how we just, it's just amazing. We just can't repeat. It's like it's a book given, but we can't repeat it. Then somebody go, well, did Jesus really mean to eat the flesh? If you keep reading, he'll tell you what he meant. So that's what we're saying. There's nothing in the Bible Jesus said that he doesn't explain. That's a lie from, see, preachers like me, like me that stand up and preach, and all the deacon Bible teachers, when we teach, sometimes we try to make ourselves something. And even unbeknown. Like God didn't say, right, we got to patch it up. Poor old God, let's patch it up. He's getting old. You know, I'm telling you, that mentality is going to get you lost. You will never make it up. We talk too much instead of repeating, reading, 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 reading. This is English. Everybody here speaks English. So you gotta be read. If it was Manchurian Chinese, it'd be that book and I'd be reading. Everybody in there should speak that language. So this we're not gonna let denominational nonsense enter into our hearts. Uh, at least if we plan on being saved. John twelve thirty seven. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believe not on him. See, now we want to criticize this group immediately after reading that. But we read the miracles done. So what's wrong with us? So you see, they were mocked as being wrong by the scriptures writing. So what's wrong with us? See, it's even worse on us. Because we see they did wrong. What's the problem? That the saying of Esau, which is Isaiah, the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake. Now look at this, Calvin. Lord, who had believed our report. So he's teaching too, but on something else, and he's saying, who has believed our report. And we're saying the same thing as Paul repeats it in Romans 10, and here John repeats it in his book. Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the law been revealed. So he's asking, because why? They're acting like they don't know what's going on. They're acting like I've never heard this. Who did your arm reach? Because these people are crazy. That's literally. They're beside themselves. They're all gone out of the way. Isaiah's going to write that also. Therefore, they could not believe. Look at that. Because that Isaiah said again. He had blinded their eyes. Don't get out of shape and uncomfortable with a number being there. It's just another line he wrote. Don't let 40 make that something different. His statement is, again, with a comma, he had blinded eyes. Who would he be? The Father, I'm blinding you. He's going to explain why. And harden their heart. Did you see who's doing it? The Father. That's why the heart will be hardened, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted. And I should hear them. This is an old testament that he's saying it to them, and he's saying it to us. Because here, the people like us are on the earth, we hear, and say, well, why aren't we getting it? Because... I don't believe you. I don't believe everything you say. I read it and I go, well, how can that be? Okay, so it's okay then. What I'm going to do is I'm going to not allow you to believe even obvious stuff. Something like, you see this guy's arm is like a prune and it comes out straight. Did you see that? The miracles are so astounding. A guy you've been seeing blind since he was young, born that way. Physicians can't help. Miracle workers, no one can help. No father at all is just as good as deserved for Christ. Somebody might say, well, they can fix people who are blind. Say, okay, we said that was reserved for Christ back then. They couldn't. Okay? For the smart of the world, the time frames have been released. 
for many things God has allowed. So they're so astonished they ask the parents, is this your son who you say was blind? See, you, need that, you get that mentality? Because no one's ever done this. Solomon says nothing younger than son. Has there been healing? Yes. So what is this? It's healing. It's healing. So Solomon in law, don't try to tag him. It's simply healing, but this type of healing, this has never been done. He, he, if he would say there'll be nothing new made, then you go, oh man, he's tripping with this airplane now. Okay. He didn't say that. He says nothing new. What is airplane? It's transportation. You remember the Holy Ghost inspiring Solomon. Right. Be careful. Because you speak against him, God's going to kill him. I don't have any problem with saying kill him. Because for some reason, we think God is playing. We really do. We think he's playing. He's not. Take him lightly. Lock Uzzah, and you'll die. Uzzah, however, does not. You die. He was serious. Don't put your hands off. You're not a Levite. Priest. Remember that. So, we understand here, this is God in action. So when you don't believe your heart gets hard, it's made hard by love. See, this is what weak need preachers don't like because this will run weak members off because they don't understand who God is. That's not the person I worship. That's why you're going to die a lot because you do worship the wrong person. While you're even sitting sometime in the so-called Church of Christ gathering, you're still not worshiping right. And you're going to wonder why things can't get together in your life. Or you, you maybe should start worshiping right. And that will help from the heart. He said he will not let them be able to see. They can look at it. They won't understand with the heart. This is a spiritual man. And they're not going to be converted. And I tell them because I don't want to heal them. Because you don't believe. Do you know that God did not give a pass card simply because Christ rose from the dead? He gave no pass card. Nobody believed it. Now, that's not the first resurrection. <laughs> but Jesus said, okay, I'm the teacher. They just don't believe. And we're going to get to, he called them something. Something about their heart, which is what we're studying. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory. When he saw his glory, Isaiah got to talking. Man, I know what's wrong with these crooks on the earth. Nah, I've seen his glory. They're just no good. And spake of him. Verse 42, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. Watch this. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Just like today, because of certain preachers, elders, deacons, and Bible teachers, certain members of the church, be they male or female, certain relatives, certain family members, certain neighbors, whatever it may be, they're going to think something about me, so I'm not going to confess it. They may cast me out of something, lest they should be put out of the same God. Now you would say, well, brother, who, who wants to be brother John cast out of church? How do we worship God? Let God worry about that. You just make sure... That's like the blind guy got casted out that could see. He didn't seem to be discombobulated. Okay, I did not. It wasn't Jesus. It was the Father by himself and no one did anything. Oh, no. He knows, okay, cast on him out. What did Jesus do? Now, this is what God does when you get cast out of a weak church of Christ. Let me tell you what God does. Sends Jesus to go look for you. When they told Jesus, they threw him out. He went and looked for him. He wanted to know one thing, one thing, one thing. Do you believe on the Son of God? See, I know they do with you. I don't know if you still believe in me, Jesus. Asked. That's all you need. Once you get that green light, you're okay. And here's their motivation, verse 43. But they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. I know you don't think that about Nana. I know. You don't think that about Grandma. But they love the praise of men more than God. You have to understand that. When you have given point blank scripture, and it's very plain, it don't mean no bunch of messages. Okay. Uncle Ned, I understand what's happening. You, you love the praise of Uncle Jojo more than Christ. 
But you said, if I do this, JoJo's going to quit dealing with me. You know, he's the pastor, and I'm one of the D. JoJo's going to quit dealing with me. Okay, that's fine. Let's see if JoJo can save you, though. Know. If he can save you, then run with him. But I haven't seen that happen. It's not in the scriptures. They do not believe it is better to suffer confessing Christ than to deny him by being silent. His parents of the blind man and John and I were so afraid, they said, he is of age, ask him. We don't want to confess. The boy already told us. They would be like, can he see it? We didn't know. No, they're lying. He told them what happened. And they're afraid because the Holy Ghost is going to tell on you. I believe that. Jesus warned them again. Look at Mark 6, 45. He warned them again. He warned the disciples several times. Warned them again. <laughs> brother, you got, brother, you got to take this serious. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just hoping you do. I'm telling you, God is not playing. He's not playing. I mean it, brother. God is serious. That song come up every day. There's only one reason why. And when it's cloudy, every now and then a lot of little patch people, you see, the sky is blue. In the midst of the most evil storm, and sometimes a little patch, it's blue up there. That's because the clouds are under the sun and sky. That's how they travel. They're under. And you're under the clouds. The sun don't go anywhere. So, you know, I'm just say, we knew that, bro. And I'm glad, but we need to act like we know it. In faith, Mark 6, 45. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship. Now, he, look, he stopped them. And what's he going to do? And to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people. He's, got, he's setting it up. And when he had sent them away, he departed to a mountain to pray. See, this is what makes Jesus so strong. I got I to I gotta go in the mountain, man. I'm getting away from y'all and go pray. You people of the earth. That's exactly the, There's no people up there. I'm going to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea. Do you understand you're in the middle of the sea? Do you understand you, it's too far to go north, south, east, or west? You, you in it now. And he alone on the land. And when he saw them toiling in Rome, man, they tried hard. It's not happening. For the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, this is bad, brethren, you got it? This is bad. This is late night stuff. In the middle of the sea, and you working hard and not getting anywhere. That's how life can be. Middle of the night, middle of the sea, middle of the trouble, and you're working hard, man. You're, whoo, and, and you're not getting anywhere. And he's going to tell you why there's something wrong with your faith. Now, let's just watch. Now, we can do that when we're trying to get college degrees, which I say amen to. We're trying to have families, raise them, beautiful, accomplishing physical goals and business. We, we get it. Oh, we get it, man. We get it, and we glory in it, which is beautiful. You know, when it comes to getting rid of foulness in our life, not happening, Captain. Not happening. Just not gonna do it, man. It's not. It's not gonna get removed with the foolish method we use it. We can't stop sinning in the church because we're not believers. Okay, let's just see. It's not old man's theory. He's gonna tell us exactly what's wrong with the whole scene. So they're toiling, middle of the night. He cometh unto them. Now watch what he does. Walk up on the sea and would have passed by them. <laughs> now you thought he was coming to rescue. Man, please. You bunch of weak neighbors. Unbelievable. I already sent y'all out. Now y'all put you right in the middle of the wall. What you going to do? I'm going to walk right by What's it say? Now see, I, see, this is what happens when, like Brother Sreer say, too much commenting and not enough reading. I've been hearing that a lot. Too much comment. Not a, he gonna, the story going to get broke down by the Holy Ghost. He's going to help us with it. But when they saw him, not he saw them, walking by the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit. Just assumed and cried out. Ah! What's wrong with that? You don't even take time to look and say, oh, that's Jesus. That's why I'm fixing to walk by y'all. 
So you and I need to understand, when it get like this in your life, cry, help me, Lord, I can't get it. Because you're working for nothing. You're not getting nothing done, brother. I've been there. You're not getting anything done. Hard working. Middle of the night. Middle of the trouble. Nothing getting done. You can see it. You see it's not getting done. And if Jesus is anywhere out of vicinity, there's a spirit. If his help is there, you're going to label it something else. That's what we do with the kings and queens. Label it something else. Well, it can't be there. You get the message? Yeah, that's what it is. It's a spirit. No. Oh. Estella, that's the answer, man. That's the answer. But that's why he's walking by, y'all, man. I'm fixing to deal with y'all. But crying out, they were alerted him. And what did he do? Okay. Okay. That's what he does. I'm coming to y'all, I'm coming to y'all. Ha! Ah! Great fear, sorrow, dismay. For he says, they all saw him were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. I'm on the water. Y'all crazy and unbelief. Ha! Ah! Be of good cheer. Just come. Be a good cheer. It is I. No, just be a good cheer. It's me. That's how the Lord comes. We are, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. It's trying my heart apart. It's busting my life. Uh, be a good cheer. Here's the end. And, 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 man. And you say, I know. I forgot about the ass and the Bible. It's there. It's right here. Right here. And it went up unto them, unto the ship. And the wind ceased. So they, they say it ceases, and they were sore made in themselves beyond measure and wondered. Verse 32, for they considered not, this is the key. See, Brother Henry, how, yeah, they be teaching this, and other brothers coffee on them. They teach this so beautiful. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hard. You talking about way back before we got on this boat, when you took that bread and that fish, and did this. Do you understand that that miracle is them just something to see? Hey, it's in the bar. Hey, everybody, hey, man, get the fragments. Everybody, hey, everybody, hey, let's go. This didn't impress you? So now, you're working hard. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You're not going to do nothing. We'll be blessed if we ever see you at church again. There's a reason saints don't show up. You better call and make sure that the reason is good. That's all I'm telling you. Because maybe they forgot the Lord. I forgot what he did for me four years ago. I forgot what he did for me last week. I forgot what he did for me yesterday. This is, this is that. yesterday, man. And we go, that's not it, old man. Then you're one of the ones. It's a spirit. That's you. It's a spirit. That's how you're going to be when the answer comes right before you. This can't be it. This is a ghost. Of all the trouble when there comes a ghost, man. We're being tormented. No, what you're being is blind and your heart is hard because you forgot about the load. Because it doesn't regulate. Someone's walking on the water. And you're working on shit. Someone's walking on the water. It's Jesus. And you go, it's a spirit. Yeah, that's what I say. It read good, don't it? Read easy. I do know dissect. Their heart was hard because they did not consider the power of the miracle of the load. Therefore, how can Jesus walk in water? They thought this is obvious, and I'm seeing him. And look, if if he was on the land, well, okay, me and walk on land. Here come a dude. Here come a dude. It's Jesus on water. Who's on water? No, but a ghost. And, who, and the ghost not on our team. That's why we are. Ah! See, the Holy Ghost telling. Let me tell on you and me too. Therefore, how can Jesus walk in water? They thought Jesus warns them again. Look at Mark 8, verse 14. It's hard heart, man. Hard heart. And some then you get some of these brothers be making comments and worships and Bible stuff around the world. Well, see, I can understand how they thought. That's because you lost, too, in the church. I don't want to hear your credentials. How could you understand how they understood that? You lost, too? What miracle have you forgotten he's done in your life? You lost, too? Wait till your husband leaves you or your wife. You're going to know what life is about. I mean what I just said. 
People sit down in church, man, it's so per- pristine. Like, oh, you know, this dude got a man, not a woman. And you can't compete with the dude. You got that, sister? You can't compete with a dude. You hear me? Because you have not the credentials he has. Okay. Game over you. Call your lawyer. You thought it'd be a woman. I can love her. I don't like women. That's what he tell you. I don't even like women. Now what you going to do? Now you want to blame the church. You want to blame everybody else. You're going to blame them when people try to tell you, well, you know, we were trying to tell you things. Now you don't want to go to church. Before you know it, you in the boogie down churches, jumping up and down. And you you forgot the miracle. That's what happened. Who would think this would be a reason? I know you can't figure it out. Neither can I. The Holy Ghost says, tell him. He's telling. Praise his name. He's telling. Mark 8, 14. Now the disciples have forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. Watch this. And he charged them, saying, Take heed. Beware of the leaven of Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Now you would think, man, I don't know why Jesus couldn't say, you know, beware of their doctrine. And like Paul says, Thou fool, were you with him when he made everything? The council, should we make leaves green or orange? You weren't with him. This is exactly what they need to be told in this manner. Verse 16. And they reason among themselves saying, it is because we have no bread. Do you understand they have no concept because of their hearts? How are you going to tell them? They're going to say, we ain't bring no bread. I told you, we ain't bring no bread. What? That's how brethren do. It's because you don't have a building. Elaborate like denomination world. You, you don't have your, you want a sandwich? Because that's really all we can give you. You want a sandwich? Because you're definitely not eating gossip no more. You're not eating gossip. You have bologna, spam, what do you want? Because that's all we can give you. And I'm just being real. And when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, did he say, oh, ye children, I love you. No, he, he's upset. Why reason ye? Because you have no bread. I'm trying to teach a deep lesson here that you should get. Bread? Perceive you not yet, neither understand. Does that sound nice? Have you yet hardened your heart? They got it. You're still hardening your heart? You're still hardening? You just can't accept the stuff I'm telling you. You just can't accept it. Saints just cannot accept certain things. Now these guys are going to get it right later except for Judas. He's a fool. Don't be like Judas. The Lord will stomach us for a moment. Like this, but don't be like Judas. But see, it gravitate. We're going to talk about that fool tonight. Verse 18. And having eyes, see now, isn't that the statement of Isaiah? Do you see? See now, first it was against the leaders of the Jews. Now it's swung back to my elite group. Same thought. Hard heart, eyes can't see, and having ears, hear you not? Yeah, you, you, you're not hearing? And here's the last one, which is a go, and do you not remember? This is what he told them when they got to the land, Israel. He told me, he said, listen, when you get to the land, don't forget me. You're going to get these houses. You're going to get this stuff. You're going to get these things. See, in your mind, you're thinking animals. Do you understand the value of an ox? That's like a truck, man. That thing is awesomely powerful. You, put, you get a house, you got a big old tractor trailer with a nice, all everything shiny new, nice couple of cars that you say, this going to be your AC blowing in your man, the refrigerator full of food, yeah, because they ran, you know, because they knew they were going to get whooped. And before you know man, you get to eat, you forget, you ain't forget to thank God. So I'm about to eat, before you eat that boy, you better thank the Lord, what's the matter with you? Didn't he tell us? I'll do, oh, you know, I, you thank him first. Well, remember him. Well, I'll say, man, you come to the new land, they still tripping. That's the thing about your prayer. So when you get in trouble, you ruin in life, you don't got mad, you ruin life, and your life tough and tough, you forgot the Lord. You forgot how you got where you at. That's all right, that's all. Same thing. It is the same. It is the same, brethren. God love us. We got to get it. I know we're going to get it. I know we're going to get it. He says, now he starts to question it. When I break the five loaves among the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took you up? So he said to him, 12. And when 
the seven among the four thousand. See, here's the two major miracles of, uh, of the feedings that have been done. How many baskets full of fragments of yeah? And they said, now I said, you know, he said, dude, we did two of these. We did two rounds of this lesson. Why is your heart still hard? Two rounds of it. As soon as I start talking, as soon as I say bread, you're thinking bread. You're thinking bread. As soon as I say the word bread. Some dealing with bread. Leaven. Yeesh. You're thinking bread. And he said unto him, how is it that you do not understand? He could have said it calm and it still pierced the soul. He could have said it excited. It doesn't matter. It pierced the soul because, like, how did you forget, man? Well, like this was 20 years ago. I mean, my goodness. This is a car. A hard heart that does not believe what it has already seen will not understand the additional lesson of Christ. That's, that's it, brother. That's all, that's all you're seeing, or, or one thing you're seeing here. Is that I just, you know, man, I forgot about that, man, you know. About that. I used to be telling myself and doing something say, yeah, man, you know, man, this is going bad for me. And, you know, your mind, and now the law of child's work, you start remembering, it is this, this, you know, yeah, but see, this is different. I remember I caught myself and I said, you fool. I said, you stupid fool. What do you mean this is different? The people in the Bible. I tell myself, do you want to go to hell? I'll talk to myself, do you want to go to hell? What's wrong with you, man? I mean, this is different. It's your mind, right? Leave it where I say. You pray about it, no move on. I'll tell yourself, brother. I'm telling you, there ain't going to be nobody to tell you. You don't hear no voices. You do. You really should be there. You don't hear no voices. Let's wrap up with Hebrews 3. Uh, lesson text, Hebrews. Brethren, we did a lot of reading. I mean, man, we made some comments. I don't know what's wrong with brethren reading scriptures. I'm very nervous, you know. I'll tell you, I, I have good hope for you, brethren. I can die in peace. I mean, you, brethren, or something else. God bless you all. You are doing well. Praise the Lord. Continue on. Hebrews 3 and 5. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant. Now this as a servant. He's faithful, but he's a servant. For the testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we. Does that mean breaking down? I don't need no breaking down. So why do we need a, a new translation in more money? Is this not this, whose house are we? What's the problem? Well, i got to be somebody. He's a prolific writer and a powerful speaker. Man, you better sit down somewhere. You better sit down somewhere. You better not follow him home. Be careful. Close your eyes because you'll be surprised at what you see. I'm telling you what I know. I don't say nothing else. I didn't say no name. If we hold fast to confidence... And the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Do you know what happens when you find great leaders you admire acting crazy and sinning? This is what you do. One of several things. You know, all men sin because you are crook too. All you can say, all men sin, we pray for them and get them right. Different mentality. Some people see, they go crazy. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Well, you know what? He back to what he did. Or something new. See, you didn't understand this stuff. This stuff is spiritual. Sin is spiritual. When you see sin spiritual, it causes you to be discombobulated if you're not wrapped together right. You don't know that. And that's why the Bible tells you. Some nations were just discomforted because they didn't believe in the law. Me and Brother Hamilton saw about that. was a scene where the law said, I want you to fill up the area of your holes with water. And they didn't know why. The problem said, just stood there. Man, how is this going to whoop, man? Put the thing. I'm telling you. Fill up all the water. When the enemy looked in the morning when the sun rose, it made the water look red. And they say, the Israelites have they've killed everything. And we're next. Let's go. There's nothing but blood. And they saw the Israelites. They're, they're standing in blood. Who can whoop an army standing in blood? You walk around in blood. So, what? Now, he didn't tell them what they said it would look like. Well, just do what I tell them. When the Lord tells you something, just do what he told you. Soft ass turns away wrath. Man, somebody better check this fool. A soft ass turns away wrath, okay? Soft ass, then you, you get out of there unscathed, you're okay. 
You talk crazy. You didn't realize this boy was in the kitchen bushing your head. Now, now you taking medicine for the next 30 years of your life. You thought it's not going to get well because you gave the answer and got out of there. You'd have been okay. Well, I know nobody was in there. That's why he should have gave a soft answer and you'd have been okay. It's real, brother. It's real. It's the real as a nose on your face. Verse 7, he says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you were here as well. You know what verse 7 teaches us? The Holy Ghost is back there talking. Now, we have a problem with that. He didn't come to the Lord's sick, man. The Holy Ghost said. See, all throughout the scriptures, he teaches you the things he wants you to know. If he didn't say it, don't try to answer for him. You don't have to go to Revelation. Just go through the other 65 books and start saying stuff he didn't say. You'll be just as in so long as if you go touch Revelation. There's plenty of books we get wrong. Plenty of statements. When he said, I called you God. That was in the New Testament. And he meant it. Back then, he tells you, the writer only said what we said. And you believe that. So I just found the Son of God, and you get God bent out of shape. See, they, they knew they felt that. Yeah, we're God. Yeah, we're God. See, the teaching of Greek mythology, foolishness, is that the Titans, when it gets to God, see, they want to make sure that you understand know, the Titans are real people, and they want to get, no, no, you never going to go against God. And the Titans, if they were a real nation of people, were God, because all men are God, because you come from God. And it says that his material is what he puts together to make your spirit. But you're not in the God here. See, the Greeks knew that one too. That's what I worry is God here. And that's three and all. They got most. We got three and all. Yeah, three. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know how many people have a problem with that? Do you think the righteous cow is going to die lost anyway? But they're going to die lost anyway. You may not think so, but God is convinced. So as we wrap this up, he says, Harden not your heart. There it is. See, so when you see hard heart, your unbelief is hard, and then the Lord comes and finishes you off with the hard heart that even the obvious stuff, as he mentioned Romans 1. See, I want to stop here. I want to go to Romans 1, because I did want to mention this. As an example, I do want to mention that as an example. Romans 1. Let me show you the progression of the odd, oddness of homosexuality. You understand? This starts off with an unbelief. Let's just take a seat. This is, you know, this is very, here is Romans 1. Look at verse, uh, if you will, number 16. If I'm not saying the gospel of Christ, famous scripture we love, where the power of God is the salvation to everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Now remember, the good news here is revealed. The righteousness of God from faith to faith. You have to have faith. And when you get it, your faith is connected because it's all about faith. It's very simple to say. Faith to faith. As it's written, the just shall live by faith. Okay. Now, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Not holy people, just men. Period. So men should be able to see this who hold the truth in unrighteousness. See, they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Foul lives. But they're hiding something. Watch what they're hiding. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. God in them. See, you tell them something, but in him it's being made known. So that's why you teach this and not grandpa's logic about he caught a fish and the fish jumped back in the wall. Some nonsense teach this. And this registers and what. In them, the law is okay, now I can open up their understanding. Because all you can do is tell them, I'm going to let them get it. You start talking about, the law will be like, I don't know about no stupid fish story. Forget the whole conversation. Stand there and talk to them by yourself. I'm leaving, like he left Abraham. And you, before you know it, they got to bite you. And you'll lose something you have. Christ, you should listen to the law. So should I. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. You're made. You should be able to get it. You should be able to get it. So should I. Even if they turn upon God here, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, here's the problem. They glorify him not as God. Every homosexual knows God. He's not going to glorify him as God. Mm-mm. They want to give him a pass. No pass card. They want to give it to the adults or all the fornicators or lie. None of them get pass cards. They glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was done. Look at the area. I don't honor him as God. He's the universe, something. 
evil like that. Brother Brooks talked about that last night at the gospel meeting at Goose Creek Church. But became vain in their imagination. I'm not thankful either. And their foolish heart was darkened. Some people take great blessings lightly and they try to be holy around, even holy earth. And you can help me, man. You know, man, it's good that you uh, come to anything else. Well, you know, man, it's not being about all that. Now, see, uh, you just couldn't say thank you, praise God. <laughs> oh, you go, you fix to get on the holy heart, the highest heart that there is. See, that's about us saying, you know, this ain't nothing, this is nothing but a Lamborghini. It don't mean nothing to me. You couldn't just, you couldn't just say, praise God. He's blessed me well. Because you're fixing to glorify you. See, that's why I go to Mount Hebron Baptist Church. And my, my pastor, uh, Reverend so-and-so-and-so, you know, as he told us, the Lord told him last night, so I gave him $10,000. See, that's good. That's what we're talking about. No, what you're talking about is how it goes to hell. Because if you just gave God the glory and not got on your, you thought a holy high heart, but you're not a saint, so you don't know how to give him the glory. Because you're not a member of the church. You don't know what to do when people tell you things. Sometimes saints are like that. See, the person is telling you're blessed so you can in turn have them to glorify God. And you by saying, yeah, God bless him, man. He's really, he blessed everybody too, man. He's been good to me. That's why, you know, I've been trying to be faithful continually. You know, as a matter of fact, I was talking to a guy yesterday. Now that's what we want here. Not this other nonsense. You don't know what you're doing. That's the problem. You don't know what you're doing. And after a while, you're going to see Jesus passing by. It's a ghost! Metaphorically, I said, oh, here's my help. Here's my help. So what else happened? He says, this is the understanding. Because the key, brethren, is that which may be known of God is manifest now, for God has showed unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. See, you clearly see, it's clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead. Y'all see that? So that they are without a few. Even the understanding of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, you see people talking about Jesus as the Father in the Church of Christ. That's somebody that's going to holler, Help! It's a ghost. See, when you bring them down, they'll tell you, It's false doctrine, help! But you just came and told them the gospel truth. Talk about you. That's okay. Oh, don't get sick. See, God whooped him. He's sick. God whooped him. Now you're shimmying. You really want, you really want to get in trouble, huh? Well, there I go, brother. I'm trying to say, God help us. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified not of God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. See, I got to think. I started making up stuff, man. You know, I started making up stuff, man. You know? I start a church basketball team and glorify God. Man, it's going to cost this number of dollars. We're going to have a fundraiser. Let's wash cars and get the money to buy the uniform. Mine just keep rolling some nonsense. Don't you know I played basketball before I got baptized? I used to curse in a fake church playing ball because something didn't go right. What are you going to do with people like me? It's ridiculous. That has nothing to do with salvation. I didn't want to become a that. I was cursing in that building. I didn't want to become a member of that church. Because they never play ball out, please. I almost got to a fight with a guy in the church building, and it's ridiculous. It's such a, it's, it's imagination is ridiculous. Bring them to class, teach them about the Lord, let them go play basketball. You know how to do that. You don't need no uniform. It's so ridiculous, brother. It's just my imagination. It becomes empty. God help us. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto the corruptible man and to birds, four footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, to the lust of their own heart, to the desire of their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God to a lie. So I changed the truth of God to a lie and worship and serve the creature that will be like somebody like me more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up until vile effects. See, hard heart. Nah, nah, he's saying, I'm going to tell y'all something. They really do crazy, which is painfully obvious. They don't even see physical well in That's right. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, I saw the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one to another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves that recompense 
of error, of error which was meat, which is acceptable. This is applicable. See, I'm going to let you go all the way to where you see two dudes hugging. You can't see it? Oh, man, y'all got a real problem with God. Y'all got a real problem with God. Your heart is really hard. I'm not going to even accept the physical. Love has no gender, stuff like that. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what. Not loving God as a big hell to go in. That's how people get it. Man, you talk about hell a lot. That's because I don't want you to go there. I'm sure I'm talking to myself about it a lot, too. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Did you see that? God gave them over to reprobate minds to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Now, here's the list. It's not just homosexual. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness. See, that's obvious, too, for you to steal from people. That's obvious, too, for you to want something that's not yours. See, that's in a group, too. Maliciousness, full of envy. You know that's, you know that's hard and hard. You're full of envy, full of just. That's just obvious as a man hugging a man. A woman hugging a woman. This is my wife. And so you got to ask this. So what are you and her? Wife. So it's just two wives. No husband. Okay. Now where that's that in the Bible? Oh, in physical life. Murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisper. You know, whispering is just as obvious. See, I mean, your mind is gone because you don't accept God or He is. You don't glorify Him. You're not thankful. So you start, you know, whisper, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think they stole it, you know. Just, you know, you know. I don't believe that what he's saying. You know, just God loves us. See, you're a whisper. That's all right. That's ours. You should go like, oh man, that's like a woman kissing a woman. What's wrong with you, man? No, you don't do that. Yeah, child. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Let's see what happens at the judge. I hope you get in, but I can't tell you up because it says it's obviously not. So the hope is you'll change before you leave. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Do you know being disobedient to your parents is like a dude, of two big muscle dudes after they work out and win the contest, they hug and kiss each other and say, oh, man, that's a bit too much of, in fact, oh, their husbands, what? It's one of the, Mr. Universe, their husbands, what? I'm not saying Mr. Universe, I'm saying they just want <laughs> metaphor, okay? They're like, that, you hate you just to be your parent is just like that. Your mind has gone so foul, you can't respect your parent. And you say, can you believe that two dudes? I'm going to tell you, can you believe you cuss your mom out? See, that's what I'm saying. You come to church for encouragement. We would encourage you if you weren't such a criminal. We were encouraging you all the time. But you're such a criminal. We don't have time for encouragement. We're so busy rebuking you. So he says here, without understanding, covenant breaker. See, one of the things about divorce is you broke a covenant. You get it? See, you broke a covenant. <laughs> That's another. See, you don't hardly hear about that. You don't hear about remarriage. What about broke the covenant? You broke a covenant. Breaking a covenant is just as bad as seeing two men get mad and they clap out. Amen. See, because this is what happens. Your heart gets hard. You just break covenant. You know? I got to live my life. Okay, live it. Just remember that as an end. Without natural affection, Implacable, unmerciful, who anoint and judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. You see that? Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Man, he got a nice lifestyle. He got his wife. Watch this. He got, he got another girl down on 15th Street. I know it. I used to go to school. And he got another woman in California. That boy bad. Daphne said, oh, you, have you lost your mind? Not only do you commit the trash, you glory in it. That's okay, though. That's okay. We're not mad in a sense because it's not going to affect us. We're going to heaven. Finally, we'll wrap up Hebrews 3. Let's go back here. So the Holy Ghost says, this is a bad thing if your heart gets hard. Verse 8, as in a day of provocation, in a day of temptation of the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me. He said, test God, tempting him, challenge him. Prove me and saw my work 40 years. That throughout the whole time, test of God, get mad, saw the work 40 years. Wherefore, I agree with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. How's he going to deliver us? What a fool that. Come on, about church? So he told me, so I'm going to say, I'm going to do it. Let you know before I kill you. You're going to die in this world. You're going to just keep walking around. Some of them repented. 
You know, but I'm still not going to let you in. When you die, we're going to be a child. Now, nah, I'm going to get them to the land. Because you don't die. I'm going to let you know you're going to die. They're going to be praying your funeral. You're going to be like, tell, tell Grandma, I love her. You're going to die. What about you? Okay. He's going to get them to the land. But you're not going to see it. See, that wasn't even necessary. That should have never happened. Even poor Moses didn't make it. That's sad. Don't let people rile you up, brother. Don't let people rile you up while you lose your salvation. Forget them and their nonsense, wicked statements, whether they're leadership or members. Forget them. I don't even want to touch the family. Forget about them. Don't let them rile you up when you throw something and start cussing. Forget that fool. Let them get you all excited. Y'all nothing but a bunch of false dark teachers. Let them say it. Is there any more butter for the bread? <laughs> something to eat, man. Say what you want to say, dude. I'm not listening to your foolishness. He says here, verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, as the, the, dealing with the message, and departing from the living God, but exalt one another day to why it is called today. He said, Lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. It hardens you. For we are made particular of Christ. If we hold what Brother Brooks talked about last night, the beginning of our confidence, steadfast unto the end. To the end. So you got to hold it to the end. If people don't think this means the end of your life, I don't know what end means. So I mean, I could stop right now, 64. Let me shut it down now. Party, man. That was a good time. I, I, you know, end of my fight. It's been complete. It's ridiculous. It's got to be the end of your life. It's so ridiculous. We need Jesus. Man, it's such a confusion. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in their provocation, or as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, albeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Not all. But with whom he was grieved forty years, he asked her, who was he grieved? So the Hebrews, y'all know the history he's telling. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? The body pronounced the car, the body dropped, man. And to whom swear he that they should not enter to his rest. See, this happened before. They died. Blood still running in the vein. But to them that believed not. See, that's kind of, did that, isn't this who died? See, so we see. That they could not enter in because of unbelief. It's very simple, brother. It's very simple. I mean, God bless you. It's nothing complicated. Not, not that it's to make you think there are no subjects that are hard to be understood, but that's for the people who are unlearned and unstable. So once you learn, you should get it. If you're unstable, there'll be rebuke given. Scripture, and then you get it. But he didn't say that scripture is hard to understood, which no man knows. Okay, the scripture that he doesn't give an answer to, that's prophecy of what's going to happen to him. Nobody knows what heaven looks like. Okay, John saw some things there, but he didn't go into it. it he didn't go in there. He still doesn't know the reality of walking through, because there are no horses in heaven. Amen. So these are metaphors shown to him. So he's going to get out there. I, can I get a white pony? No, no hogs in heaven. No hogs in heaven. So see, that's what y'all been saying. So no one's going there but the Son of Man. First Corinthians 15, 3. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which all us fathers see how the Christ died for the sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried. Goes again the third day according to the Scriptures. Goes through the list of who saw. Look at Mark, chapter number 16. Very puzzling Scripture to stop. Simple to the believer. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That's just so simple. It's just God reaching out to help us to understand. Acts chapter 2, Peter could have said anything. It's our turn now. He's gone. Come on, all ye. I will feed you. No, 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 no. He's still watching. Though he be up there, he's still watching. That's 2.36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom he crucified both law and Christ. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter to the rest of the apostles, me and them brothers, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ 
for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, unto all that are false, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that glad to receive his word were baptized, and the same day there were added to about 3,000 souls. Well, what's that continuing? They continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of prayer, I mean, breaking of bread, and in prayer. And in anything, all holy men say, see, that's not in there. It just stops right there. Holy men say a lot of nonsense. So this is the framework of which we work out of. Acts chapter 8. Here's a holy man that's a law. But he is going to be saved because he's going to be a believer. He's not going to hard, have his heart hard. Acts 8, 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet did of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began to thank Scripture and preach unto him Jesus. As they went away, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What did hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, As I believe with all thine heart, thou may. And after he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the church to stand still and went down both to the water, but Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now the rejoicing again. See, you notice when the eunuch asked him that he was going, are you here without understanding? Is your heart hard? How, what do I need to say to you? <laughs> See, so don't get excited and flip the script on people and go bananas because they ask something. You understand that Jesus had gauge, they should know this already. Because I'm going to tell you, we went to two super feasts and you still think physical when I'm talking to you. They didn't ask what meaneth this unleavened. They just start talking among themselves like we do. Because you ain't bring no bread, man, see? Instead of asking him. So ask Christ. And this man is asking for relief. So that's not time to start bumping on to him. We never made chest bumping him down, you know. You don't understand, fool, you know. It's time to teach. That's what I'm saying, brother. We don't want to go ballistic with stuff. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 13. For by one spirit. Are we all baptized in the one body, whether Jews or Gentile, bond or free, that have all been made to drink into one spirit? Will it save me? Yes. Simple reading, First Peter chapter 3 and verse number 21. The like figure, when I say even baptism is also now saved us. Not the filling away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven on the right hand of God, angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. Revelation 2.10, something to think. Uh, deficient in, sometimes we can get verse number 10, Revelation 2, 10, fear none of those things which shall shall suffer, you know, the devil shall cast some of you in the prison, that you may be tried, you shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is understanding. Acts chapter 19, verse number 1. The apostles are getting baptized again, and came to pass while the apostles at Corinth, Paul, having passed the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto them, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And said Paul, John buried or truly baptized the baptism of Prince, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come out of him. That is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they baptized the name of the Lord Jesus. These are believers. That's what we want to be. When we hear information that contradicts our Church of Christ belief in the sense of taught by men, that's the side we're going to change, brother. Don't worry about who said it. Just worry about you're reading it and it's in the Scripture. There's all the way to be saved. We want to encourage you, please, be faithful to the Lord. Come to worship. As you can get away from the things that hold you back, remember to promote your spiritual life first. And your physical life also. Why? Because you can do nothing if you're dead. Come now, together we stand and sing Heaven's Invitation.